meowing our way on the internet. <laughs> I'm Yay, Michael Gaines. It's full of cats. <laughs> Welcome to Nexicon episode six. I'm Michael Gaines. I'm Casey Cogler. All right, so we're gonna have to get cats to do that for our theme. Meow 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 meow. That would be fantastic. Oh, so that is a uh, cat. It, it's basically just one cat, and 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 the person who put it together just kept keeps reversing the uh, the meow yeah. uh, point of view uh, for each note, and it's hilarious. Hilarious. Well, anything that that spoofs Games of Thrones can be hilarious. Right. No, and there's many, many, many remixes at this point. When is uh, Game of Thrones season three coming out? It's February, right? Uh, early next year. I wanted to say March, but maybe February. Oh, I can't wait. I know, I know. I can't wait that long. And the way that these books are being written, this this, this <laughs> series yeah, can no, go on forever. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I think the show is actually going to keep up with or, or surpass the books. Like, you know, they're going to have to put off making the show for a while. Oh, yeah. Until- can like write some more <laughs> it's gonna be like Battlestar Galactica where we're gonna be waiting two years between seasons uh yeah oh it's <laughs> terrible all right um let's get to the news you've you've got to run yes so what early. the oatmeal again again this guy's awesome what has he done he likes to raise money and he's very very good at it um just throw a cause at this dude and literally makes it rain it's insane um so uh the oatmeal and i forget his name but um really the oatmeal <laughs> he he had a a fundraiser i think it was a kickstarter for uh, to fund a tesla museum because mm-hmm. i think tesla they're having some troubles or going through bankruptcy or what have you they might not be making cars anymore in any case he wanted a museum <laughs> so why not you know, get a Kickstarter going for a museum and just make it rain money. And he did. And he did. Uh, 850000 was the goal, and it was reached in less than a week. Mm. And I'm sure that in the lobby is going to be a dartboard with Thomas Edison's picture on it. Let's hope so. The old male does not the- like Thomas Edison. <laughs> because they tortured, he tortured uh, yeah, animals. Yeah, yeah. There, there is a whole thing about uh, Thomas Edison sort of riding the coattails of Tesla, and and some of it, you know what it is. Some of it is true. Some of it yeah. really hasn't been proven one way or the other. Right? No, it, it it's kind of like it, it's kind of like this mythology at this point, you know, where where there's some true parts and then some parts that are just kind of like, well, I guess or maybe that sure that makes sense. Why not? And, yeah. I don't know. In any case. In any case, uh, one of my favorite movies, which doesn't get the respect that it deserves over the years, oh. has been The Rocketeer. Such an amazing movie. It, and mm-hmm. it, I have to say, over the years, it's held up. But I think it's time. I need to see this again to, yeah. to make a judgment on whether Do or not you? it's held up. You don't remember? I don't know. From what I remember, like it was cool when I was little watching it, sure. But I I don't know if... If if I watched it now, mm-hmm. knowing as as much as I do now, like if I wouldn't just be calling bullshit the whole time. <laughs> helmet for a runner, bullshit. Yeah, what is that helmet? That would not protect shit. <laughs> no, well, still, it was a comic book by Dave Stevens, which has gotten mm-hmm. praise over the years. Um, and unfortunately, he passed right after the movie uh, had come out. And they're doing a reboot. Now, the reason why I think that a reboot works for this title is because everybody that was involved has, well, they've aged 20 years. And <laughs> so, so you're if, far too old to be doing that themselves. We need some fresh <laughs> new blood in here doing it. They, we clearly cannot, I mean, they're at the salad bar at four o'clock. We cannot trust the story to them. You know, we could have Timothy Dalton play PV at this point. I mean, it's, it's just like, like that. It's, and if Disney does it right, if they take the, the angle that they did with Tron Legacy, I still think they did an amazing job with Tron Legacy. And if they, if they give it the, the, the respect that it deserves, then they can start this, this franchise, which a lot of us hoped would have happened 20 years ago. We're waiting for the Rocketeer sequels. They never came. 
Yeah. Don't and know just, why. Just keep holding your breath, I think. Just just keep it up and um I can't wait yeah. that long. So we uh we will look for that and I'm just looking forward to it. Just please don't screw it up. That <laughs> seems to be While the thing. While you're looking now. for that, mm-hmm. you know what else? Comic book wise. What? Superman apparently not so satisfied with our Earth women anymore. Well, wait a minute. Okay, so who's he hooking up with? Wonder Woman. Hello. What? I was going to say he's not hooking up with his cousin, is he? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, he's hooking up with Wonder Woman now. Mm-hmm. Um, I, what, Lois isn't doing it for him anymore? I don't know, but really, I mean, this makes the most sense. It always has mm-hmm. in my in my own head space. This has been the clear, obvious choice for Superman to get with the entire time. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they're they're wor- they're co-workers. I mean, sure, Lois Lane and Clark Kent are are co-workers, but you know, that's just a, a guise. Like Superman, Clark Kent is Superman more than he's Clark Kent, mm-hmm. right? So. When he's in the Justice League and he's fighting side by side with an equal or, you know, as close to an equal as you can get, Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, she's she's a clear, clear choice for a mate. In oh, this yeah. Instance. And maybe, maybe Superman had to leave Lois Lane because they ran into some problems in the bedroom, if you know what I mean. Mm, okay, so there's always that cliche about the super load and... Uh huh. Blow a hole right through her back. Blow right man. through her back. Like, well, Lois that's... gets a tan. The kid could kick right through her stomach. <laughs> but here's the thing. Now, imagine what it's like dating Wonder Woman. You can you can basically screw around anywhere because she's got the invisible jet. Right? No, you can't because it's invisible. Well, it's invisible to everybody the... else. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to a drive-in, screw around. Mm-hmm. Nobody would Everything. know. Whenever they show the invisible jet, it's her, you know, like in a seated position. Yeah, I know. <laughs> ghosting around like, yeah, the jet's invisible, but she's not. I know. I, I, I know. I, I I was being facetious, but it, it would be... It's, you know, here's the thing. That whole Justice League, Wonder Woman, invisible plane thing from the 70s. Okay, that's funny. But in reality, can people see her just sitting there? What? That's what show okay. in the comic so I'm guessing yes um, <laughs> but which is even weird is like why does she even have that she can fly like why do you even have a stupid invisible jet anyways it just looks stupid so instead of flying and looking awesome you're like in this weirdo you know, see that's seated. actually a good question why do you need an invisible jet because if you're Wonder Woman oh, you had, well I guess it would be like in in Galactica 1980, where they just parked the Viper in the in the in, in the park, and, and also she comes from like an island of Amazons where they live all like you know Greek goddesses mm-hmm. with a very simplistic kind of Greek lifestyle. There's no technology, you know. They're fighting with swords and shields. Why does she have a jet? <laughs> Like, That's a good question. They don't have technology there, but she comes to Earth and she's like, mm-hmm, I've got to get me a G6. <laughs> and she's got the lasso. See, now the lasso wouldn't even work on Superman because he doesn't lie. He always tells the truth. Right, no. So, ah, so, so there you go. Well, so, I mean, like, she lassos him, you know, and he's like, I always tell the truth. They lock eyes, and then there's that moment. What, see, now I'm thinking differently. I'm thinking... Superman's coming home at 3 a.m. He smells like whiskey. Where were you last <laughs> night? I was out with the guys. <laughs> Flash and I were having some fun making fun of the Green Hornet. <laughs> she wraps yeah. him around with a lasso, finds out that he's been screwing around with Lana Lang. No? And, and then she keeps him lassoed up and um, <laughs> chicka <chicken> wow <meow>, wow. <laughs> so, I <laughs> Uh yeah, this, this this is quite interesting. I uh I'm going to have to take a look at this. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Um The promo well, shot is nice though. Yes. Well, I mean whatever. So, if you watch Doctor Who, see now my my browser is all locked up. If you watch Doctor Who and you know who the pawns are, they're mm-hmm. getting their own web series. It's a little mini web series. 
little webisodes. Oh, okay. So I thought this is going to be like a main cable series. It's just a just webisodes. Just webisodes. Uh, <laughs> you know, Life of the so- Ponds. The Doctor sort of weaves in and out of their lives. Mm-hmm. What's it like for Amy and Rory? It's boring. <laughs> I haven't watched them yet. Uh, I don't think anyone they're think they're out regular yet. Regular people, you know. <laughs> yeah, they're just regular life people. Without the- Without the doctor, you know, they get up and they make <laughs> breakfast. They go to work. They forget to take the garbage out, so they yeah, hop they in the TARDIS and push. put the garbage out. <laughs> no, really. I mean, what would it be like to have, like, a time machine at your disposal? Whenever well, you want. Well, it's not at their disposal when he's not, when the doctor's oh, not no, there. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm just saying if, if you had somebody that if had a time the machine. the doctor's not there, like, they can't call him up and be like, hey, yo. So I did this thing last night. I need to come by. <laughs> like, they don't have a direct line to him, right? He comes and goes at his leisure. They have, once he leaves, they have no idea when he's coming back, well, right? Well, true, but he has a phone. He has a phone in the TARDIS. Wait, okay, so who can he call? Uh, you know, I don't remember him dialing like, out, but people have called him. What? Who? Who calls him? Winston Churchill. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, they call him up. He calls Winston calls up the doctor. And then yeah. Oh, and then when he doctor drunk dials people, that's that's good. But it's <laughs> yeah. nice, but it's okay because he's got the TARDIS, obviously. He drunk you... dials people and then he goes back and he, you know, can correct it. Oh, those damn Centaurans drunk dialing me again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh so yeah, uh I uh, let me see, when is this first coming out? I don't know. But I'm going to watch it. Of I don't know how you. interesting it's going to be. <laughs> well, th- there are people like myself. It's like, yeah, they can't get enough of Doctor Oh, five-part miniseries will begin August 27th on the BBC Doctor Who site. So you know what that means, proxy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you're just going to get these little errors that say, I'm sorry, this is not available in your country. I'm sorry, you suck. <laughs> you know what doesn't suck? Uh, a s- actual Star Wars hovering speeder bike. All right, so tell us about this. You added this. So this dude made an actual speeder bike, like in Star Wars, that actually hovers and goes. Wow. Um, the only problem is it doesn't look very Star Warsy at all, and <laughs> the it's gigantic. Like the two um, aerials that that actually make it hover are just <clears throat> enormous. And it it's very slow, and it barely hovers, like, maybe a foot off the ground. Mm-hmm. I mean, it gets up off the ground. But you're, like, you're thinking of the speeders in Star Wars, where they're, they're tight, you know, sexy little, like, rice rockets with guns, and they're oh. whipping in and out of trees and everything. This thing is not going to be doing that. It's, it's not, it can't even, like, really even, like, pivot, you know, or, or lean or anything like a regular motorcycle. It It's just... Well, let's just be fair with this whole thing. Let's be real with this whole thing. It's a leaf blower. That's a sin. He's riding a, yeah. a, a big giant leaf blower. Yeah. That's yeah. all it is. So, mm-hmm. okay, it, it hovers a foot off the ground. Okay, well. So, you know, if there was like lava on the ground, <laughs> he, he could get away. <clears throat> He'd ride. I suppose, but then why are you where lava is in the first place? Don't question. Lava comes out of nowhere. Oh, does okay. it? Don't know when lava. Is gonna <laughs> you never show. know when lava is going to catch up to you. Um, but it's okay because lava is very slow. So all of a sudden, you know, you turn around. Oh shit, lava! Well, I'll, I'll just I'll walk <laughs> briskly and outrun it. Creepy lava. <laughs> yeah, fucking lava is a creeper. All right, always been. I'm going to move the next topic to the quest log. So let's get to the quest log. <laughs> Uh, last week, I think it was last week or the or the week before, uh, we didn't know how many people had broadband. We're talking specifically about whether or not games can go uh, diskless and download only. Ah, uh, I see. Turns mm-hmm. out uh, there is a report. It's on Ars Technica that says that a third of the United States still doesn't have broadband. Now, of those third, how many of them are gamers? Is I it? I bet it's our middle third. Our middle third. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I don't know if a third. Well, first off, a third not having broadband would mean, in my opinion, I haven't done any research on this. Like, my mom has broadband, but there are still some people 
in like Montana, I'm sure, or Idaho, or just yeah. places out in the middle of nowhere. Those, yeah, those middle people. Wyoming that don't have broadband. And how many of those are gamers? So my point Probably. is is that if only a third of the United States doesn't have broadband, and of those, how many of them are gamers, do you think that the ability for us to go diskless and go digital distribution only at this point is feasible? It may yes. be. Yes. I it, mean, a third, seem, it seems like at first you hear a third of the U.S. doesn't have broadband, and at first you're like, that's a really big, big number, and mm-hmm. that's shocking. But at the same time, you're thinking like, well, how many, you know, U.S. citizens are gamers? Yeah. If two thirds of the U.S. are gamers, well, then perfect. Yeah. You know, we win. Mm-hmm. Um, let it begin. Um, but 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 really, like, if it was fifty fifty, then then maybe you know maybe it's it's still ahead. But if two thirds of the U.S. do have broadband, then. That's enough mm-hmm. to move forward. That's I, enough to have feasible streaming, you know, high quality games and, and Blu-rays and or whatever. Mm-hmm. I still think that even though we have broadband, that that brings up a good point. Is that what what is considered broadband? We still don't have the ability to stream Blu-ray quality. We get close to Blu-ray. What we get right now yeah. is we get we might get 1080p, but we get 1080p at a crappy resolu- um, um right. sorry, a crappy yeah, compression. Not- true blu-ray right so like blu-ray streams at what is it 25 megabits per second or something like that we'll get a movie that's in 1080p i think we'll get it like 12 so we'll get it compressed to hell and um, that's there the are problem. people with with higher um you know uh download speeds that, that that are about that so i mean maybe you know offer it and then Maybe like before it actually starts streaming, there's there's a checker and it checks your speeds really quick and sure. does like a speed test and says, nope, you can't have it or it's going to be really <laughs> crappy for you or whatever, you know, and then you're like, okay, fine, just give me the lower, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I found this today and I had to read it twice and I really? wrote down in the show notes. I'm not surprised at all. In holy shit news. It's not surprising at all. Lord of the Rings Online, apparently Lotro Lotro has had a Mac client. And the reason Mm -hmm. why it came to the news today is because the NDA dropped uh, today or yesterday. And so people have been testing this on the Mac. And the reason why I'm so... Once in a while. Like, Lotro's been out for years. Oh, I know, but... This is about about right. Uh, You know, it comes out to the PC. Years later, the Mac gets it. Why is this surprising? It's surprising because I think at some point, when you're a game developer, is that you have to look at the platforms that you want to support, and you say, well, we've already established ourselves on Windows. A lot of gamers are on Windows. Is it uh, fiscally feasible for us to look at the Macintosh. Are there enough yeah. gamers out there on the Macintosh where it's going to justify the cost of paying the developers and the time that it's going to take and and everything like that? I'm sure they didn't whip this up in a week. Um, no. The assets, uh, the the um, the sounds and the images and, and such, those are static. You can do whatever mm-hmm. you want on both platforms. It's, it's all about putting the logic into the game. Now, I don't know what language it's, it's being built on. Uh, maybe it's Objective C. Maybe they found some way of using some crap like WX Windows or something. Yeah. But I, I don't know. But they, they got it working. And the reason why this is a big deal for me is because there are a lot of people that were screaming at Bioware to create a Mac client for Star Wars on uh, uh, Star Wars Old Republic. And they said, well, no, nope, we're not going to do it. However, Origin is now out or yeah. coming out and you have, you have for the Mac. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say. I mean, you have both. Like, there's, there's. It's either like game companies are in one of two camps. There's the ones that say, well, it's really just not feasible. <coughs> there aren't that many. We don't have that many fans over on the Mac side. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's gonna take up a lot of time and resources. And you know, let's feel it out on the PC side first, and then maybe we'll think about going over there. And then you have companies that are like. Let's just do it from the get-go, like Blizzard. Blizzard, yeah. You know, they've always been out for both. It's You buy one disc, and it's got both clients on it. Um, 
you know, I don't, I, I don't ever remember a time where Blizzard was like, I don't know, I don't know, there aren't that many Mac users, and do do Mac users game? I don't, you know, I mean, they just went for it, and, and they put it out for both, and never looked back, never questioned it, and I think they've probably been doing better for it. You know, there's tons of people, well, I mean, WoW and the like have a huge audience base anyways, but... Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's never been. I don't think it's ever hurt Blizzard to do that. No, it hasn't. <clears throat> I don't think it's ever delayed their app, their no. games. They've always done uh, everything so far as I can remember. I think from from Warcraft three forward, they've always had a Mac and a, and a Windows client for everything that they've put out. Yeah, yeah. And rightfully so. I I really wish that I could talk to somebody over there at Blizzard and just pick their their brain about how they do it because I have done cross platform programming before and it's a pain in the ass. And yeah. so I would really like to know not that I would like steal their info or anything because I'm not is. No, I, I just I'm just curious because yeah. there are so many different ways that you can approach that problem. I'm just curious as to how they did it. Um <clears throat> I mean you can always write stuff in Objective C on the Mac. You can always I don't know, can you still write stuff in Carbon? Um, I don't even you know. You can, but I don't think it's going to run in Snow Leopard or newer. Oh, that, yeah. See, I haven't written anything in Carbon since they in got so rid long. of um, Rosetta Stone. Wouldn't it oh, not work anymore? Uh, well, it, I think it's a matter of how it's compiled. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, no, that's um, a good question. Cause but I, I want to say that it, it probably wouldn't run. Yeah, um, Mountain not. Lion and Lion for sure probably wouldn't. Right. But, you know, I mean, back in the earlier days, Blizzard probably ran just, you know, like a rapper or something. But And then as they built up resources and as they um, got, you know, more funds and re- and hired more people, then they probably started cleaning up their act, you know, coding in Cocoa, bringing in dedicated Mac developers, um, stuff like that to where I, I would bet today that it's it's a straight up objective C um, you know from the ground up mm-hmm. and not something funky being ported over yeah all right so related to to this you have a, a an item here about uh, another game coming to iOS what is this I keep finding all these old games coming to iOS and it makes me so excited so this one uh, Warhammer quest is coming to iOS next year. Um, and now I've played Warhammer and mm-hmm. Warhammer Online. Um, and so I thought, well, maybe this is a little kind of bite sized offshoot game for iOS. But then the article goes on saying, you know, there was back in 1995, there was a board game called Warhammer Quest. Mm-hmm. So it might just be kind of a port of that to iOS. Cool. Mm hmm. Star Wars Old Republic. Oh, how far you've fallen. <laughs> the, um, th- this, I mean, after everything that's happened to this poor game, this poor, poor game, which had, God, we I mean, could have done so well. This is, t- in, in my opinion and in the, in the opinion of many people, this is the nail of the coffin. They announced that they are going to have pay to win items. And what that means, for those of you that don't know, um, you essentially, because the game is going free to play, um, you can pay for items that have stats on them, which means that for those of you that play WoW and EQ and, and all those, um, you know that you have to grind, or even, even Star Wars Old Republic now, you have to grind in order to get gear. Well, now you can just pay for it. Well, you can do that in EQ and EQ2. Too, too you can do now. that in EQ? You've been able to do that for years in EQ. Stat- it's called eBay, and <laughs> oh well, yeah, but that's that's unofficial though. This this no. is actually going through through Bioware and EA. Is that you're going to yeah. be able to you're going to be able to buy not top tier items, but just below top tier. Well, it sucks that it's it's EA specifically, you know, condoning this, but it it, it really isn't too different than buying gold in a way. You know there. As far as all games, I mean, you can buy gold or plat or whatever the currency is for any game out there today. Mm-hmm. Um, 
companies don't like it. They'll try to shut you down if they can prove that you've bought gold. But, um, you know, it's out there and people do it all the time. So it, it it's a lot like the, um, the lion hopper passes you can get for an amusement park. Mm-hmm. You know, either you have the time to spare or you don't have the time, but you have the money to spare. So which is more important to you? Yeah, that's... Would you rather spend time grinding it out mm-hmm. you know, because you're broke or whatever? <laughs> or if you've got some money and you don't want to spend four hours or whatever, you know, getting this little piece of gear, then just buy some gold or buy the gear itself straight out and be on your merry way. Yeah, that's always been the argument about that whole, uh, do you, do you want to level the playing field for everybody or not? Uh, it's, it's an age old... Uh, problem. Yeah, and, and that's, I agree with it. I'm just saying it's it's been around, yeah, like you said, forever. It It's always been there. And, yeah, it obviously raises the game artificially for sucky players. But um, what are you going to do? I, I don't know. I There's don't nothing know. you can do, but but the purists are against it because they want the, the the playing field level. They want everybody to earn it. The purists are against everything. <laughs> the thing is, like, you and I have played WoW. We've played EQ2. Do you really think that buying anything really would have hurt, let's say, World of Warcraft? If Because I know people that have bought gold. Yeah. Um, um, no, I don't think it, it hurts anything. Um, I mean... Okay, so it raises your gear score. I mean, really, I mean, on the face of it, do you think, well, then this this sucky noob dude who can't, you know, grind his way through a dungeon to get this gear has the better gear than me uh, ahead of time, and, and now he's a better player. Mm-hmm. And maybe, you know, you can say that on the face, but I would even argue, no, that's still, you know, the gear doesn't make the player. Mm-hmm. Um you can just because you have a high gear score and now he can like you know enter um lfg and be like hey look at my gear score you guys should you know group with me and then mm-hmm. they get him in a group and he doesn't know his role he doesn't know the layout he doesn't know exactly. what he's doing you know a person can still fuck up many many ways well, sure and and that's that's always been the 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 argument for buying gear is that you can buy as much gear as you want yeah but you're still going to suck and so, yeah. and and you'll get booted out of a of a group fast. Oh, I do not have patience for sucky players. I'm no, sorry. I don't either. If you do not know your role in a group, if you don't know your class, okay, great. If you have a sucky rotation, that can be fixed. If you mm-hmm. don't know your role, I'm so sorry. I'm going to boot you. Yeah, I was reading an article today. Uh, this is a very interesting article about um, uh, about um, damage meters. And mm-hmm. some people, there are always people saying, you know, they're for them, they're against them. And every time a new MMO comes around, they say, no, 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 we don't want damage meters because of look what it did with WoW. There was a very, very interesting situation that happened where there was a DPS death knight in WoW, obviously, who was very, very low on the DPS meters. And he was about to get booted out until they finally realized that the reason why his DPS was low is because he was supporting everybody. He was keeping the mobs off of the healers he was he was doing so He's much tanking. he was running well not so much tanking but what he was doing he wasn't a tank he was dps pulling, but, but he was getting pulling aggro yeah he was pulling aggro away from healers he was actually running around supporting so many people that that's why his dps was low but without that nobody would have survived and so people say well because of that dps meters are crap because well, it, it doesn't prove anything. But but here's the thing. It's how you use the damage meters. Because inside the use of the damage meters, you'll see that he did this, 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 this. Yeah. These are the spells that he cast in order to pull stuff off of the healers and such. So, Because, um, I mean, at, I want to say, well, then, don't... Like, he sounds like, you know, he's still a valuable support class. And... And in in a group, you know, you you want your tank, your healer, your DPS, but there's always room for a couple of just kind of support people who say, you know, they're good at crowd control or they're mm-hmm. really good at removing um, poison 
toxins or something, you know, and they have like one function and it's not going to score high on the DPS, but it's still necessary where it sounds like he would fall into that where it's just kind of this support category. Right. But when you're looking for group, you there's only three options. And so people say, <laughs> oh, well, you came in as DPS. You're not doing DPS. Yeah. Yeah. So no, that's true. Guild Wars 2 this weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Man, such a change. I know. I know. I'm excited. No, I, I I'm wait. not making fun of you at all. It's it's just good to see you excited about this because I just... I'm cuter. I'm going to get my pizza. Oh. Some drinks. Get everything set up. And it, then wait for this. It starts to uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, right? I think is what we figured out. That midnight? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm probably going to be playing it a lot this weekend, um, mm-hmm. except when I go to the Doctor Who thing on Saturday night. But, um, yeah, I can't wait for this. Um, oh, that's awesome. One thing that I found is that I was trying to – I thought that my Guild Wars 1 account was linked into to my NCSoft master account, and it's not. Uh-huh. And oh. so because of that, I won't – until I get that fixed, I can't get my reserve name. So I have to, they said that you can get it done before, um, I think Friday mm. is tomorrow. So you have until tomorrow to do that. But yeah, I got to get that taken care of. I tried doing it today and all their systems were down because of the release. Yeah. Yeah. Now we should say that the actual launch isn't on Friday night, Saturday morning. Right. Um, it doesn't actually launch until this coming Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you got pre orders then you're in for the extra three-day Guild Wars 2-a-thon mm-hmm. all weekend. And if you're in, if you're in beta, if you've been in beta, go and re-download the client. You should have gotten an email. Uh, if you haven't been playing beta, but you are, um, if you're um, eligible for the Head Start, go download the client because it takes a while. It's huge. I think it's like, what, 15 gigabytes? Or 20 uh, gigabytes or something? Uh, <clears throat> I didn't think it was that fat, but maybe. It's very possible. Yeah, it's very big, so go grab it. Uh, That's what we'll, she said. <laughs> we'll be talking more about Guild Wars 2 as the game goes on. Yes, we will be talking a lot, I think, about it. A lot. It. Nintendo Power Magazine shutting down after 24 years. I never subscribed. To the truth, I thought it already did. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it already did, too. Uh, I, I guess in this day and age of the internet, there's really no need for it. Yeah, you're like, what? People still read magazines? What are these magazine things well, you're talking about? Is that like an iPad app? You know, I, <laughs> well, that's the thing is, is where do you get your news from now? Like, I have my list of, of sources and mm-hmm. yeah, you can you can read these. Like years ago, let's say around, let's say around 2000 or something, the internet was around. I mean, I've been on the internet since 88. But the internet did not pre- become as prolific as it is now as a news source, an instant news source as it was years ago. So I have not been reading as many magazines as I did. I still do read some digital magazines like Rolling Stone mm-hmm. and things like that. Imagine effects. But no, I don't really read too many gaming magazines anymore because everything is online. Yeah. And everything is instant and... Interviews. You know, you know what the big thing for me with magazines were were interviews, and mm. everybody's doing interviews now. So the, the the allure of magazines have have pretty much died for me. Oh well. Oh well. Say lovey. <laughs> final. Whoa! Final. Lots of, <laughs> <laughs> I just Lots got of Final tea. Fantasy news. Final Fantasy VII for the PC was released. It's ten dollars. Eh. I have it for the PlayStation still. I have my original discs. There's a lame achievement list. It's like... <laughs> lame <laughs> achievements? I only want good achievements. Get this person's limit break. And and really what they should have done was they should have pushed people into doing more of the game that they may skip. Especially in the gold sauce. Have you played it? Have you played 7? No, not no. 7. Do they have chocobos in it? Yes. All right. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of things that could be done in the game uh, or I should say that should be listed as an achievement in the game that uh, were not so mm-hmm. I was kind of disappointed in that and the achievement list I mean, what does it do for you I mean, in, in World of Warcraft it's, they're bragging rights and such yeah I mean it. it's different in different ways I feel like some games it it gives you like 
um, in Guild Wars too. You yeah. know, there's a there's achievements for uh, accessing different stuff, for exploring different things, and so I I feel like it adds another level of gameplay. So if you're like bored with questing or you're bored with trade skilling, then you could just go and do this, you know, sure. other offshoot, and so you know, and just build up those achievements. Um, so some games really use achievements as you know a good kind of extra add-on to add to gameplay but then yeah some like wow it just kind of seems like well that's stuff you'd be doing anyway so i guess you could keep track of it in this list over here mm-hmm. if you want i guess yeah yeah i'm i'm not look i've got it for the playstation 3 because i just wanted to see how well that um that port ran and i still have my original playstation and the discs for seven so i'm, I'm not gonna get this but related to Final Fantasy, uh, 14 is shutting down. Now, here's the thing: is that a lot that of quick. a lot of websites are sort of misrepresenting what this what this means. It is shutting down, but it's coming back. It's sort of like what happened with Star Wars Galaxies, where they had that new experience, whatever they call. It, I forgot what they called it. Remember that? It's sort yeah. of like that. I don't know. I don't remember that being very. Um successful no was it? it wasn't um yeah and it wasn't that doesn't seem like it'd ever be a good idea that's like, why let's you, shut it down and then start it back it's okay we're bringing it back up like what like why <laughs> i don't know uh because i have not been able to find anything about what the uh the remake the, the renew is is going to be but uh, uh, retailers better. are being told to destroy all their inventory which <laughs> this is, that's hilarious what i, I guess when they <laughs> relaunch it on fire in in the back of best buy to <laughs> burn all the copies burn them burn all, all the things blasphemy games cannot be saved oh it's a shame though because oh, i played final fantasy i bought the collector's edition i had high hopes for it and i played the game for 10 minutes i went oh this sucks i think yeah a lot of a lot of people did yeah, it's, it's a shame, but it will be coming back. So if you if you see anybody saying that it's shutting down permanently, as of right now, that is not true. It's going to be renewed. We just don't know anything about the renewal. Yeah, right. It's not permanent. We just don't know when it's coming back. <laughs> All right, what's going on with this 16-bit Borderlands 2? I saw this on Geek.com, and I thought it was so cool because um, I'm a big nerd who likes anything retro. Uh-huh. Um so it's it's a Borderlands 2 port um, online, and it's all 16-bit, like, <laughs> neon freaking colors, nice. and it looks gaudy as hell. And, and, it's, and it's, on, it's just online in a browser, and it's totally free to play. It's just a, a super silly, like, hey, look what we did. I, I just made this. So what's <laughs> up? You no know, kind of thing. All right, before we go, our Geek of the Week is empty. We forgot There's to fill this no in. no Geek of the Week. There was no geeks this week. There was no, like... Nobody? There, I was, I don't know, I was racking my brain all day today and uh, part of yesterday. I uh-huh. think, I think we should pick the oatmeal. Ah. For his, uh, his $850,000. name first. Oh, I, I, um, uh, I know it. Inman, Inman, Inman. I remember that because the city I grew up in had Inman Avenue. Um, Matthew, Matthew Inman. Inman. Yes. Yes, that's, that's a good geek of the week. All the amazing, funny stuff that he does, even though not everybody agrees with it. Inman. Oh, screw those people. I Matthew know. Inman is the best, and he is our Geek of the Week, and he may he continue to make it rain. Absolutely. All right, we're done. Woo! If you want to write to us, tell us how awesome we are. I am at Star Mike on Twitter. Casey is K A C E Y K A S O. Casey Queso, the Casey, not the cheese. You can email us, thenexicon at gmail.com. We're at thenexicon.com. We're on the Goog. We're on the FB. We're everywhere. All up in the internets. The things. All the things. All the things. Thanks for watching and listening. We'll talk to you later. Bye.